Thank you. That was the nicest intro I've ever had, I think. So th thank you very much. Uh, who, who here is from Montreal? Yeah, you guys have an awesome city. This is day two for me in Montreal. And man, I, I, I think I got to move here. Just amazing. So this talk is really weird. Um, last year, I competed in the SECTF, came in third. Uh, that was kind of my goal, top three. This year, they've accepted me back again. My goal is, is, is number one. So um, I'm going to be shooting for that. And since that time period over the last year, I've had exposure to uh, different people that are in the business, both good people and bad people, uh, that have kind of coached me and given me insights. And, and companies have asked me to present and talk to them uh, as well. So this talk has evolved over the last year. And so what you're going to get is the product of that. And uh, has anybody seen this talk before? Awesome. That's great. Perfect. Because just in case, I've added some, some more ad additional content. And I've tried, to, I've tried to incorporate some of the information that really bad people have given me. So hopefully that'll make it a little more interesting for you. So uh, a little bit about myself, just so you know like why I should be up here talking about it. Uh, so I've worked in IT forever. Uh, I've got a bunch of certs and stuff. Um, I work in the aerospace industry. So a, a big, because of the industry, a big part of my time is security pretty much all of my time. Uh, I volunteer for a local search and rescue team, and uh, I fo my focus in that team is as a tracker. So why is that relevant here? Because for OSINT, open source intelligence, it's very similar to tracking, I found. And, um, and I've also created a nonprofit uh, called Trace Labs. Which, so if you want to check that out, please do so. If you have any interest in OSINT and you want to do good for your community, let me know. Uh, looking for people that can help out there. I'm trying to bridge that gap between the traditional search and rescue that are out in the bushes. Typically, that's what I do. I'm looking for footprints and sign, and then bringing that to the modern age where I'm actually looking at your, your online presence and then locating you that way. So it's really interesting for me. This whole thing has evolved and taken off over the last year for me, which is pretty exciting. As we go through the presentation, if there's stuff you like or stuff you don't like, let me know. Twitter's probably the best way. Just say, hey, Rob, this slide has a typo, or yeah, I really like this slide. You should put more content in that area in your presentation. So that would be really appreciated. Thank you. All right, so what are we going to cover today? Uh, this is basically the, the high level of what we're going to go through today. Um, some definitions, some introductions. Then I'm going to show you some of the techniques that I used at DEF CON. Um, and then I'm going to talk about what bad guys do as well. Uh, and then everybody wants tools, so I'm going to go through tools a little bit. But I'm just going to tell you that Tools are very, are, tools are less important than technique, I find. There's a new tool every day. So I'll show you some tools, but uh, um, yeah, it's, I think it's really just learning how to do OSINT, and then there's, there's tons of tools out there. All right, I have to show you this. Uh, one of my employers has asked me to do this. So I say a lot of things, and a lot of those things I disagree with even the next day. So uh, nothing I say here today is, is uh, related to any employer I've ever had or ever will have. So. Just have to get that out of the way. All right, so let's get into it. This uh, social engineering stuff. What, what is this, this thing, right? Um, so it's, it's basically manipulation. And how does that differ than from, say, influence? Influence would be where it's in your best interest. I might be working with you and saying, hey, you know, what if you took this course? Maybe you could get a better, you know, a career advancement or something like that. I'm kind of looking out for your best interest. Whereas manipulation, it's usually I'm going to coerce you to do something or say something that, that's going to get you in trouble. So that, that's what it's all about. There's a fine line there. Um, I find that when I talk to people after they learn that I'm into social engineering, immediately they don't want to talk to me because they think I'm going to manipulate them. But that's not always true. It's sometimes I'm influencing. So, so, so when we go to the party tonight, don't all take off. I'm not trying to trick you. Okay. All right. Okay. So. So what are some examples of social engineering? Uh, we have what I call the golden oldies. Uh, they are still around today. Impersonation, we have both the physical and the virtual impersonation. So you know, you put on your overalls, and you, and you have like the, the uh, recycling or garbage or whatever the vendor is, and you just uh, stick her on your overalls, and you walk into the building like you're supposed to be there. Um, and then also more popular now is the virtual impersonation, where uh, you're pretending to be somebody else. Uh, tailgating. Still a problem, right? We still have people that just kind of walk in behind someone else. The trick now is you, uh, if you're a lady, you can put something in your, in your belly, some patty, and pretend you're pregnant, right? Or you can carry the big stack of pizzas or donuts, right? 
Um, nobody wants to stop you if you're carrying donuts. Um, so that's still a problem. Shoulder surfing, less of a problem now, but you know, you still see it on the bus, at the airport. It's great. I always look because I want to kind of see how much I can see. Screen protectors are great, but not all of us use those. Uh, dumpster diving is a little better now. We shred most of our stuff, so that's, that's a little better. So I have stay out of the four. That's probably the one that's improved the most, but they're still relevant, right? Some more current attacks. So these are the ones we see more today. Uh, the email attack, the phishing, right? One of my personal favorites. Vishing, right? That's where they're phoning you. And then the smishing, that's the SMS attack. I'll, direct, I'll try to misguide you and, and give you, put you into a, uh, a, a cred harvesting area, right? So, and, and what's really effective now is attackers will use these in, in combination, especially if they're going to be targeting a whale or your executive, right? So very effective if you can do them within a short period of time altogether. And then we get into more current stuff, right? What's happening next? And um, so this list keeps growing, and it's a really busy slide. Um, every day there's something new. So social media impersonation, fake accounts. Um, so you're in the lineup to rent your car. It's taken forever. You're getting pissed off. It's like, you know, so you send a tweet to the company. It's like, you know, this is terrible. And you get a tweet back, and it says, hey, I'm sorry about your experience. Click this link, and we'll give you a free credit, right? And it's not actually them. It's just somebody who's created an account that looks like them. So that works really well. Social engineering as a service, right? We all want scalability. So, you know, the bad guys do too. So this, everybody's, everybody's doing this now. You can get denial of service attacks, whatever you want as a service now. It's super easy. It takes you five minutes. Virtual kidnapping, another one which has multiple uh, benefits, right? So if I can get your account, I can ransom it back to you. I can do bad things with your account to make you want to pay. I can engage your friends, right? And you can do a lot of wonderful things there. Whaling your executive, so uh, the saffron rose, we saw that a little bit in the news. Uh, executives hold the keys to the castle, right? So they're really going to be my target a lot of times. They have control over the money. They have control over, they have authority, so they can get other people to do stuff. So if you're not training your executive, that's probably something you want to look at. Uh, Pseudo ransomware hybrid attack. So this is a one we see more and more from sophisticated threat actors, uh, especially in nation states and stuff. So they know you have limited resources, especially in, in your infosec groups, and, and they know that you're probably understaffed even, right? So if they can distract you, get you working on this stuff over here, they know they can then come over here and do stuff, and you may not notice, or you're definitely going to have less, less staff to deal with it anyway. Uh, professional network solicitation. Uh, again, this is growing, becoming more popular. If you get a uh, solicitation from a very attractive young lady saying that she thinks you're amazing and you have great knowledge and you should come to this conference, it might be fake. Just saying. <laughs> is it? It could go the other way too, so sorry. Um, that's the example that I've seen. So, uh, SME conference invite, uh, espionage baiting. Uh, so we see this a little bit. Come to our conference. Uh, fake headhunters, those thousands talent program. Uh, that's very popular. You can Google that guy. Uh, sock puppets. So we're seeing that more and more, right? So anytime you want to influence uh, a lot of fake news out there. Oh. So this we see more and more. Uh, so, and this is really where we see it going. Um, a lot of, you know, this, and it's not new. A lot of companies and governments do this more now and now. Um, large employment in this area as well. Um, I think in Canada we don't really see much of it, but there is a huge effort in this area. All right, so the origin story of social engineering, uh, it's been around forever. It's not a new thing. The people who built the pyramids, I'm pretty sure they were really good at social engineering. Uh, if you want to get a crash course in social engineering, you can just walk onto a used car lot and uh, and, and engage with the people there. It's, it's wonderful. I love doing that. Get a big coffee and just go on there and, and let them go to work. And uh, it, it's a wonderful experience. All right, so the trend, why do we care, right? We know where it came from. It's been around for a while, but why do we care about this sort of stuff? So it's, it's growing. It's, it's growing so, and if it was a stock, I always like to, like to relate stuff to stock, right? So if it was a stock, it would be a super hot, hot stock from the growth rate of that, right? This is from the 27... Verizon report, and um, so yeah, you can compare it to the, some other things, right? The uh, 
what they call hacking. I forget the definition that they put into that, but that's the stock recommended by your friend that is never a good idea. So that's why we care, just because it's, it's used as a precursor to almost all the attacks, right? Um, either OSINT or social engineering of some type. Historically, we've never really cared about it very much. For those of you that have done your CISSP, you're very familiar with this model, right? Very focused on the technical levels, right? Um, and I think it's time we started to look at the, at, at, as the people as an additional level of this thing. Why would I spend time trying to hack a firewall or do anything technical when I can call one of your employees, ask for the password, and then they will give it to me, right? Five minutes. So it's super easy, low cost. Um, so it's the first thing we go to. All right, so this is the Kevin Mitnick quote. Uh, I've had great debates with people about this, and um, I'm not saying it's people are very easy to trick generally, right? It's not because they're not smart or anything bad like that. It's just that, you know, you're super busy. We had a couple presenters up here earlier that were talking about that. You get hundreds, if not thousands, of emails. So that's part of the problem. So it's, this is not necessarily negative, but it, it does seem to be reality. Does anybody disagree that social engineering is really a, a, a really big concern? That, that anybody could, could be tricked? Somebody has to disagree, otherwise I can't do the demo. All right, thank you, thank, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That's exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, thank you, all right. So this is the interactive part of the presentation, and um, I hate this part. So I hate it because it, it, it's a lose-lose situation for me. Uh, I, if I trick you, you're gonna hate me. If I don't trick you, I'm a fraud. So I lose both ways, but it is kind of fun, okay? So let's do this really quick social engineering demo, and uh, let's, for the sake of the demo, let's pretend we're one big company, okay? Everybody in this, in this room right now, we've all just signed up for this startup, we're really excited about it. I'm the one InfoSec guy, right? Because that ratio is about right, right? And uh, yeah, so, uh, so I gotta write some policies uh, about stuff that you shouldn't do, right? So I'm gonna say no to everything that you wanna do. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do, something that's vis visible, I'm gonna do, let's, let's do hand flipping, okay? That's some, I was gonna do dancing, but I don't think we wanna go there yet because we haven't had enough beers. So let's say hand flipping. I'm gonna write a policy because everybody reads my policies, right? No hand flipping allowed, okay? So this is where you look at your neighbor and you place bets if you want. Um, so don't flip your hands. Everybody clear? So uh, put your hands out like a zombie so everybody can see your hands, please. All right, let's, all right, everybody, let's start with our palms up. All right, that's the demo. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, typically, I get half the room. I noticed some of you didn't put your hands up, but I get half the room. So, it's a stupid trick, right? R ridiculous, but it kind of gives you an idea of that's the, the misdirection, um, just a quick example. If, I, if we try hard enough, we can get most people with, with these sort of tricks, right? Uh, if, you're, if you want to do a fishing program at work and you need more ammunition to justify the cost, just Google it. There's tons of stuff out there. Um, you know, it, executives giving away $50 million with a bank transfer, super embarrassing day, right? Um, yeah, so, uh, all right. So, DEF CON, SECTF, what was that all about? Really interesting. If anybody wants to do that, let me know. I'd be happy to, uh, to go through it with you. I'm going to be there again this year. In general, I think the CTFs, no matter if it's uh, SE or whatever it is, super valuable. I would recommend that to anybody over a, a, a course. Uh, you're going to learn a ton. So I, I can't say too many good things about that. So the, the SECTF, it's basically two stages. The first stage is your OSINT. So you're given a target, and I'll be receiving mine for this year shortly. And there's 16 competitors, and we all look at a certain industry. Uh, last year it was the gaming industry, so I got a company from, from the gaming industry. And you've got about three weeks to do your OSINT, your open source intelligence. And uh, at the time, I was terrible at it. I didn't know what I was doing. So it took me about 100 hours. So that's evenings and weekends and any moment I could spare, I was doing OSINT. And uh, you have 29 flags that you try to collect. They're fairly benign. 
things like uh, what kind of VPN do you use, how long have you worked for the company, uh, what kind of browser do you have, stuff like that. Not, not too bad, right? And then you collect that, you do your report, you hand it in, and you get points. And then you go to Vegas, and you go into a glass booth, and you have a couple hundred people watching you, and you've got 20 minutes to perform. And you're going for the same flags, um, but you can go through multiple people on the phone. And the, the winner is the person with the most flags, the most points. So you basically have that kind of recon, and then the attack phase, much like what an attacker would do. And these are real companies, which makes it a lot of fun. So these are the flags. You probably can't read that, but it's you know pretty straightforward stuff. Oh, do you have a cafeteria? Do you, what's your VPN? Janitorial. Janitorial is great if you want to do physical pen testing later. Uh, what's your OS? How long you worked there? So pretty normal stuff, right? Like if you if this got in the wild, you wouldn't worry about it too much. But these are the ones that you probably would worry about. So you know, and I see this all the time with companies. You know, I look at, uh, you know, for, for job postings, I love looking at job postings. All the technologies are listed there. Even, they may even talk about if it's an InfoSec job, their response capabilities, what kind of assets they have. It's fantastic, right? If I want to uh, take all your assets and resources in an area over here, distract you, and then attack over here, that's great to know that information. Uh, what's your patch level? So that actually is pretty good. So if I'm going to give you an exploit, I kind of want to know what your patch level is and what kind of protection you're going to have there. Delivery methods. So am I going to, am I going to fish you? Uh, what's that going to look like? Am I going to drop some USB keys in your elevator? Right. That's that's nice to be able to know. So some companies they'll lock the USB, so that's not a a viable attack method. Exploitation. Uh, what kind of antivirus do you have? Right. Is it behavior based or signature based? That's really nice to know. On your perimeter, what does that look like? Um, all these things are, are usually advertised and not hard to find. Um, alerting, what's your SIM? Does anybody look at your logs, right? So that's a really nice thing to know. Um, what are your hours of operation? So this is great for uh, doing your recon stage, because I'll dial into your PBX, and I'll hopefully nobody will answer your phone, and then I'll get a bunch of information from your phone, uh, from your recordings and stuff like that. Uh, machine naming, so that's quite often advertised and very easy to get as well, and that'll help me locate key resources. Hours of operate, oh, I did that. Um, location of your assets, oh, your, your, your DR as well, right? So quite often the DRP plan is public or, or readily available. So that's really nice to know how you will respond to these things. So if I shut off your HVAC, uh, if I shut off your generator or something like that, and a lot of people's generators out in the parking lot, actually pretty easily to easy to access that. I can just plug into it, turn that off, and people freak out. That's a good distraction. So all those things are very nice to find, and it's usually out there, easy to, easy to see. All right, so on the OSINT side, let's talk about that for a minute. The first thing I want to do is, uh, you know, I'm going to acquire my target and start going through that methodically, step by step. I'll look at the physical first. So where are you located? Um, you know, the country is important, your building locations. Uh, Google Street View is awesome. It's a slice in time, but quite often I can learn so much from that, right? Uh, egress points, you know, what does your roof look like? Do you have a lot of HVAC on the roof? Do you have entry points, loading docks? What's all that look like? Points of entry, who does your parking, right? So I can call your employees and say I'm from that particular parking company. That works really well. Then I'll move into the technical. And quite often, this is really nice, and there's a lot of great information there. Who's registered your website? I'll get contact information there almost always. Uh, IP addresses, so I want your block of IP, what that looks like. Uh, and then corporate, um, you know, who's a lot of registration information. We'll have a lot of uh, people that are less technical that I can reach out to, your lawyers, your HR, uh, finance people. Property management is really good and often overlooked. So I can call your property management company and pretend I'm, I'm you or a representative from your company, and they will typically give me a ton of stuff. And then we get into your staff. And this is where it just explodes as far as information. And you just go to LinkedIn. Um, that's your first kind of go-to stop. And uh, it, it's wonderful because it's all, it's all packaged up really nicely, right? And uh, you can get 90% of your stuff on the, on the staff right there. Um, it, it will try to make you pay as you go through and start using it. Um, that's their, their model. But you can use certain tools to get around that. Uh, recruitment, 
Uh, X Link LinkedIn X-Ray was one of the tools I used, but there's a whole bunch of tools out there that will help you do that. Uh, some of them are automated, so you can just scrape it and pull it all down. Um, I tend not to automate too much, um, just because I find it's more effective for me to just do a little bit more manually. So then once you're going through the people, you've got a collection of people, you'll find that about, you know, it's the 80-20 rule. There's going to be some social butterflies out there that post a ton of stuff, and those are the, really the targets you want to go for. Um, you, don't wanna, you can spend huge amounts of time chasing down everybody, but you really want to refine your search and get those people that are just going to give you, you know, a lot of information. And even sometimes they're friends, even if they're not working for the company. Um, they will be taking pictures and talking about the, their, their friend who works for the company. So focus on that. And then for detection. So when I did this, I was so bad. I went on LinkedIn, and I was looking at all these people. And you know when you look at someone's LinkedIn, they then will sometimes look at yours because they wonder, like, who is this person? Why is the person looking at my stuff? So they look at your stuff. When you do that to about 1,000 people that all work for the same company, and then you realize they're all turning around looking at you, it becomes a little, little nervous, a little nerve-wracking. So that's what I did, and I was like, ah, oh, that's a big mistake. So you want to be careful with that. Set up your platform appropriately uh, so that they're not going to be taking a bunch of information from you as well, right? Um, there's a bunch of options out there. Uh, Buscador by Michael Bazell. I've tried that. I'm actually not a big fan of that. I think you, you might want to just try it out. Uh, it's specifically, it's a, it's a Linux distro that's specifically designed for OSINT. Uh, I'm a big Michael Bazell fan. Great podcast, great books, great website, great tools on his website. Highly recommend that. It's a great starting point. Um, I kind of lean more towards like a Kali Linux platform uh, running on VirtualBox or VMware. So you can then archive that uh, for evidence. Um, set up a VPN as well. Do, the, do all those things. I mean, you, you're probably already doing this as well. But when I did it, I didn't do any of that. It was a bit embarrassing. All right, so some preparations. Um, I'm developing a course for first responders. And part of it is um, for search and rescue. And part of it is going to be for them uh, retaining evidence. And if you're working for a company, you probably want to retain evidence as well. Uh, Hunchly is a great product. Um, it, but there's other products out there as well, though. But you want to think when you start doing this, how are you collecting data? If it's even for a CTF, you're going to have the same problem, right? Um, you're going after certain flags. You don't want to spend time learning all about the company, all aspects of it. You really want to refine your search because you can go down a bunch of different rabbit holes, and that's, that's kind of what I did. What's important? Uh, what, if you're writing a report for your executive, you know, what are they going to care about? So summarizing all that data. And then how are you staying undetected like I did not? All right, so as I was developing, um, preparing for DEF CON, part of that was my pretext development. And pretext is basically your lie. So you have a, a mark, and you're going to tell them a lie. And you have to develop that so that it's believable. And your receptionists, I find, are some of the best people to talk to about this, um, because they're, they're generally very good at quickly analyzing somebody and figuring out if they're legit or not. And uh, so I spent a lot of time with our receptionist, and, um, and they were, they're awesome. Um, you should invest in your receptionist as well, right? So not only are they kind of the, the physical firewall to your building quite often, but they're getting all those calls from people like me as well. And um, so typically, they don't get a lot of user awareness training, but I think we definitely have an opportunity there to, to invest. So they've been super helpful. Then once I've got a list of people for your company, I'm going to take a look at, OK, so who are going to be my actual marks? So whether it be at DEF CON or a real attacker, I need to have a shorter list of people. And typically, that's going to be on LinkedIn. I'm going to look at their uh, connection scores. And I'm going to look at the ones that have, say, less than 100, because they're not well connected, not only with your organization, but in general, in the industry. So those are going to usually be people that are fairly new to the industry, which is good, because they're not going to know a lot of people. They're not going to know what's inappropriate, necessarily. And I'm also going to look for people that take a lot of selfies, that share a lot of information. Hopefully, that information is inappropriate. So if they have a picture of their VPN configuration, perfect. That's who I'm looking for. So that's, that's actually a true story. I, I found that, that person, and uh, they gave me tons of stuff. Um, so basically, I'm looking for high charisma, low wisdom scores. And 
strangely enough, that turns in, that translates into interns and contractors. Um, and I think that mostly that's because they're fairly new to the organization typically and new to the industry, just out of school sometimes, and they're not as invested. So from a contractual, if they're contractors, they're coming in typically for a six month job and then they're going to another company and another company. So they're doing some self-promotion, they're not as invested. So that's typically how it works for me. So I'll automatically now look at the interns and the contractors right away. So, All right, some of the techniques. And this is mostly psychology. Um, I want to develop rapport with you. I want to get you talking to me. And I want you to feel comfortable. So I will do some things like the confirmation. Um, so how do you like your new Dell laptops? And in your mind, you're thinking, well, we do use Dell laptops. And you may not even consciously think about this, but you know, your response, if you're having problems, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, they're terrible. The USB ports don't work or something like that. Um, but it's, it's, it's kind of like we've skipped the whole stage in the conversation, uh, which is exactly what I want, right? All of a sudden, now we're, 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 we're talking. We're going back and forth. Or I might, you know, if I, if I can stand it, for my ego, I might do the reverse confirmation where I'll let you correct me. And people typically like to correct others. So I'll say, oh, how do you like your uh, Toshibas? And you'll be like, no, we don't use Toshibas. We use Dells. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I got that mixed up. So um, that's often quite nice to do as well. Um, name dropping. So this is pretty typical. Uh, oh, yeah, your VP, Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so said I should talk to you. Um, that works quite well. I've used that. Uh, blowing smoke, you were recommended to us, right? So to make you feel good. Real attackers don't do this very much, uh, unless it's a very targeted attack. But at, at DEF CON, this works great. Anytime you make somebody feel good, um, that's usually going to be quite effective. Salespeople use this, right? So typically, I talk about attackers, salespeople, and then DEF CON CTF people. So those are kind of the three main groups. Uh, impending doom, I've used this one. This works actually quite well. So something big is about to happen. And there's no choice there. It's going to happen. That event is going to occur, but I'm here to help you get through it. So, hey, uh, Larry's going to be on site tomorrow. We won the RFP for your HVAC, and I'm just calling to get that set up. And uh, is there anything that he needs to know before he gets on site? Can he just, is there a card he needs or do you need some ID? Or can he use your Wi-Fi when he's there? How about the bathroom? Uh, do you have a cafeteria where he could eat lunch there? So I'm just going to start going through that, and um, that's very effective. Allowed to vent. Uh, real attackers don't use this too much. Um, you know, if you can uh, relate to them and they can start to unload on you, you know, you can be their therapist a little bit. That can be effective. Uh, smarty pants, very effective. You know, if you can say, you know, how did you ever figure this out? You know, this is my first day. My boss is yelling at me. You know, can you help me? Um, a lot of sympathy. Uh, greed. So greed is something that real attackers use a lot, and you've seen this in the phishing attempts that you've gotten. You know, it's often time sensitive, it's zero sum. So the first three people to reply win a trip to wherever, right? Or a cruise. The cruise is the popular one, right? On your phone. Um, so that, that's very popular. Uh, we did a phishing program where I work, and uh, the time sensitive one was the most effective. And uh, so I like that. Sympathy. Um, we're, we're designed to care about people, which is a good thing, right? Uh, but it's for attackers, they utilize that as well. So, uh, you know, I'm brand new to the organization. My boss is yelling at me. I think I'm going to get fired if I don't get this done. Can you please help me? Like, who wouldn't, right? You have to be pretty cold to ignore that. So then uh, my pretext for vishing, I basically got three different styles of pretext personally. Um, there's a ton of them out there. Um, the entry method one is the first one. So a company that's kind of set up to defend against this will have their, uh, their in ingress points kind of designed to filter some of that. So I want to get past reception. Um, and these are designed to do that. So if I, once I've done my OSINT, I know you have interns. You have certain people that work there from different schools. I can call from the school, spoof the school number, and say, hey, I'm calling to talk to so-and-so. Uh, I just want to talk to them about their, their intern experience and see if they can give us feedback on how we can improve that going forward to get past reception. Nine out of 10 receptionists, they buy into that. So that was pretty good. Uh, industry knowledge, if you have any industry knowledge, whatever that is, right? For me, it's data centers and stuff like that. 
uh, that's what I'll focus on. So I'll talk about things like HVAC because I sound you know, like I'm knowledgeable in that area. So that tends to work. Targeted methods, and Mitnick was great at this, right? If you listen to some of his or read some of his books, uh, he's, he, he likes to layer things, and this is very effective where you're calling one person and you're getting a bit of information, then you're calling somebody else, getting a little bit more, and then finally calling somebody else and getting that final piece, but you're building that house of knowledge, right, from those little bits of information. And each one seems relevant, re relatively in, unimportant, right, but allows you to get to the next step. So um, the enemy of my enemy. So calling the uh, property management as if you're a potential tenant or another one of the tenants as if you're a potential tenant, just asking them about, you know, so what's, what's it like there? What's the building like? Are you having any problems? What's building management like? Are they good? Are they responsive? Yeah, have you had any problems with uh, the sprinkler systems or the building alarm? Who do you use for security? Are they any good? So people typically are responsive to that. Special delivery. Uh, anytime you can copy a scripted response, which is typically quite easy to do, right? So the FedEx one that I used in DEF CON was that they had a parcel that had some border taxes, and I asked them, would you like to you know, pay for that on delivery or just pay for that right now? Uh, I can put it on your FedEx account right now if you'd like to do that. And she gave me the, the, the FedEx account right away. And uh, they, they, they beeped that out because I didn't actually want that, but just to confirm that they use FedEx. But anytime you can copy a script, because that's all people are listening to is the script, which is very familiar to most of us. Um, can I tell you a secret? Everybody likes secrets, right? Um, I got a group of people that we're going to lay off, and uh, they've asked me to call you and find out about your company and your benefits. And, uh, cause, and I can send you their resumes, so I'd call a recruiter and do that. And the recruiter is usually has a, has a fiscal benefit in helping me, because they're going to get a, if they bring somebody on, they'll get a bonus for that. So they're very motivated to talk to me to see these high potential resumes. So if you can locate somebody who's going to get, you know, a bonus to talk to you, that's, that's even better. So, because that's what they're thinking about. Uh, and these are the full dump methods. And typically you wouldn't think these would work very well. Um, but if you get people on a roll, they, they actually do. And in DEF CON, this is great because you only have 20 minutes to deliver a whole bunch of stuff. So you can, if you can do this and just blow through uh, a bunch of questions, it works great. Uh, you're a lucky winner. I didn't do that. This is used all the time by real attackers. We're all very used to it. You're never the lucky winner. Uh, the upgrade opportunity. I like this one because you know some of us, we have different equipment, different vendors. And uh, nobody tells you when the vendor changes quite often, right? You just get some out of the blue call. It's like, yeah, hi, I'm your new, new supplier, your new account rep. It's like, oh, okay. So I was going to do that. I never did it, but I like that one. I might do it this year. Uh, the employee engagement survey. We all like to give feedback. And I find the engagement survey is great. I use this one. It worked really well. Um, hey, so-and-so. So, -and -so, so com combining a few different techniques. So and so, your VP of HR told me to phone you and said that you know you would be really helpful for this exercise. I'd like to get your feedback on the employment engagement and how we can make a survey to help promote that. Uh, I've just got a few questions for you. If you have two minutes, it's always two minutes, right? Actually, I want 20, but it's always two minutes. And then I just go bam, 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 bam through all the questions. Uh, there's some discussion around uh, if you get caught as a social engineer, um, what you should do. And they say that you know you never get out of character. Even when they're putting the cuffs on you, you, you just stay in character. I don't want to go to jail, so I, I'm not going to follow that advice. So what I was prepared to do was if they catch me and, uh, and say, well, I, I'm not really believing what you're, what you're selling here, um, I would immediately, because I want people to feel good. I don't want to be victimizing people. I would say, hey, congratulations. That's awesome. You caught me. So, you know, because I, I was hired by your company to do this, uh, this test and see you know, if you would fall for these tricks. And uh, congratulations, can I get your name? Because I want to tell your VP of whatever uh, that you did a great job. <coughs> yeah, so th thank you very much. And just to baseline these questions, can I just go through these questions with you real quick just to make sure I got the right answers? And uh, I was just dying to do that. So maybe this year. So the spirit of DEF CON is to not victimize. I mean, you're targeting a real company but you don't want to hang up on somebody and make them feel like trap, right? Or make them feel as though they just gave away the everything. So um, that's what I'm trying to do there with that. All right, so that's a lot of information. Just a real quick reflective moment. Um, 
some questions for you. You don't have to answer these out loud, but just something to think about. Um, would you know if somebody in your company had been socially engineered, especially your executive, would they come to you and say, you know what, I just, I just wire transferred $50 million. So uh, that would be bad. Um, does your insurance cover that? Um, that would be something interesting to take a look at. I have not seen in the news any, any uh, it's probably not advertised very much, but I'd love to see insurance companies respond to that, right? Um, that would be interesting. If any of you have information on that, I'd love to talk to you about it. Um, do your internal resources uh, have the capabilities to respond to this sort of an attack, right? So, uh, that's uh, another thing. We do a lot of technical training, but how much SC training have, have you had, right? SANS is a new OSINT course that just came out. So if anybody's taken that, I'd love to talk to you about that. And then uh, who's ultimately going to get fired, right? Um, unfortunately, that has been the response by a, a lot of big companies is, you know, they let somebody go. They're like, okay, we fixed the problem. So-and-so's gone. They did a crappy job. Well, you know, I'm not, that, it's not a good response to this, right? I don't think that's a, a good way to go about things. But ultimately, that's sometimes what happens. And it's, if we've covered ourselves as InfoSec professionals, right, and shown that, look, we did the user awareness training, we did these different things, the chance of us getting fired is, is less likely. So I think preparing for this sort of attack, as far as, you know, uh, um, ensuring you have a good career that's that not uh, prematurely ended, I think is a good idea. It's uh, unfortunate, but that's the risk some of us face. All right, some recommendations. Uh, OSINT yourself, this is a lot of fun. I have a Google uh, alert for my name, so now I've discovered there's a lot of other people with my name out there, and all, not all of them are wonderful people. Um, OSINT your company, find the butterflies. Those are the people you want to go talk to and say, hey, you know, you probably don't want to put the VPN information out there. You know, nothing wrong with some self-promotion. That's not going to stop. They're going to keep doing that. But you want to look at that. And what's at risk, right? Is it proprietary data? Is it money? Um, some phishing recommendations. Um, do a phishing program. So a lot of people tell me, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to trick my users. You don't have to trick your users, right? It's more of an educational thing. You can make it fun. Reward the people that do good work, right, that, 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 that figure it out make them into champions, don't punish people, because then they will be upset. Uh, you can put EXT on your incoming email, so when your C CEO gets an email from the CFO, it's not really from him or her, it's going to say EXT, and that's going to be a tip that, oh, I, I see that's, that's actually not from that person. So you can stop allowing active links, uh, although nobody's going to do that, uh, and provide other channels. Email's terrible, right? So we all get so much email. Use different tools, Slack, Twitter, blogs. Uh, Bishier Executive, uh, be very careful with that. They don't have the sense of humor that we do. Uh, so be very careful there. Um, invest in your receptionists. Um, you know, I, I find that these people are wonderful people, very patient. Uh, their, their job is actually usually quite challenging. Uh, PBX, I love your PBXs because I can dial into your PBXs and dial by name and get all your information. I can get your DIDs. I can get, you know, your voicemail. Um, you know, you may want to remove dial by name. Most of us still have that, I find. I give DIDs only to external facing people. A lot of companies, DIDs for everybody, direct inward dial. Um, you don't all need that. Some of that can go through reception. You can have a, a, an extension. Stop answering your phone. I got in trouble for saying that. A bunch of managers looked at me really really bad uh, when I said this the first time. And it's like, so of course, if it's your boss, answer your phone. But uh, typically, someone's phoning you because they want something. And um, so I love voicemail. My voicemail goes to my email. I listen to it and delete it. Um, get on the offensive. So we always talk about how we can't scale and how the attackers only have to be lucky once. So you know, by developing a culture of you know, where we're looking at this and we're having fun with it. And you know, start giving out Starbucks cards, right? You, you did a great job. Here's a Starbucks card. Take a picture of them. Put it on your, on your uh, intranet. And um, start looking, start, you know, instead of just saying no all the time, we can say yes, right? We can say, yes, this person did a fantastic job. And here's a Starbucks card. Develop that cultural change of proud protectionism. And uh, you know, some companies do this better than others. But when the people are proud to work for that organization, they're more likely to not let that person through the door with the pizzas that doesn't have the card to get through. Make, create champions as well, right? So when people are doing a good job, you know, make sure they're recognized. This is a cheat sheet. Um, you know, I'm not going to go through all of these things, but 
from all the bad people I've talked to and the actual uh, intrusions that I've, that I've seen, these are the things that will help some of your problems go away, will make you a tougher target. We talk about things like patching. People are like, no, I can't patch, it's going to break stuff. Yes, it will. You still need to patch, right? Develop a system where, you know, it, if it's an important system, have two. Patch this one and then patch this one. Do things like that. Um, 2FA, there's lots of stuff, activity this year on OWA. If you don't have um, 2FA on your webmail, that's a, that's a fantastic opportunity for people. I've seen a lot of this year. Uh, assume I'm already on the inside as well, because I probably am. So if you're not actively threat hunting and you haven't found me yet, I, I guarantee you there's bad stuff on your network. I, I, I haven't seen one where there's not, really. So just, it's just levels of bad, right? All right, so everybody likes tools. These tools are not going to you know, make you an expert at all in this. These are pretty just you know, high-level tools. There's a new tool every day. And, um, but these are some of the ones you can start with. It's really about technique and what your target is, right? So if you only have an email address for your target, your tool set's going to be different. Your technique's going to be different. Uh, I love looking at things like uh, IoT, uh, any sort of uh, systems. Uh, their, their fences, electronic fences, their ID cards, their HVAC systems, it's all usually plugged into the internet, and usually they've forgotten how, it, how that's working. Uh, some technical tools, uh, wiggle.net is interesting, you can get their Wi-Fi SSID usually from that. Um, some of these are just better than others, uh, there's a bunch there. You can collect pretty much everything they've got by these tools here as far as, you know, who their technical people are, their contact information. I had executive cell phones, executive addresses, home addresses, their pet names, you know, where they went to the gym, uh, everything. It's, it's all there. Uh, corporate, indeed.com, fantastic. Your job descriptions are amazing. I know about all your technologies, your, all your infrastructure from your job descriptions. Uh, you probably don't need to do that. Uh, Pastebin is great. Do a keyword search on the company. Uh, do a keyword search on your company. If you find stuff in Pastebin, that's probably, probably not going to be good. Um, security guards, uh, those, are, those are really good opportunities. And, yeah. So on the staff, we went through some of this already. Recruitment, uh, or actually, what's that tool? Recruitment Geek, that, that URL, that'll have the tool there that you can use. Um, SlideShare is fantastic. For some reason, people like to put reference letters there. So that's where you can get a lot of executive home addresses and weird stuff like that, which is fantastic. Um, in Canada, well, I never knew this, a really bad person showed me this, uh, that you can get criminal records. So a lot of people come to me now and they're like, hey, Rob, I'm renting out my place to this person. Can you just check them out for me? So I'll tell them like, if they have a criminal record, what their assets are, all that stuff is pretty easy to do. And then personal websites, we're all doing self-promotion and that's not gonna stop. So there's tons of information on there. All right, some resources. Um, these are some the typical go-to ones that I recommend. In the US, Michael Bazell, uh, Intel Techniques is a website. You can go there. If you want to do some quick OSINT, uh, he's got a bunch of tools there. That's probably the first stop. He's got a great podcast. He's more into the privacy side now. Great books, um, a great resource. On, on the West Coast where I am, Toddington is kind of the go-to person for training. He trains all the agencies. Uh, social engineer, of course, he runs the SE Village. Uh, he's got books, podcasts, you name it, he's got it. And then if you're into the kind of the psychology of the whole thing, uh, Robert Caldini is, uh, is a great resource too. So lots of stuff on YouTube. You don't have to go out and spend money. Just, just Google him and you'll find a, great, a lot of great stuff. Um, yeah, so there's a bunch of other stuff in there. There's, there's Twitter accounts where you can get tools and stuff like that. So if you want more resources, just let me know and I'll send you what I got. All right, that's it. Thank you.